I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making chocolate cupcakes with vanilla frosting. I know I said I'm not much of a baker, and I'm not. I dabble, I have a lot of fun with it, I enjoy it. Uh, I'm a professional chef, not a professional baker. But these chocolate cupcakes are one of those recipes that is so easy that I always talk about that, that kitchen tool belt. This is a kitchen tool belt recipe. If you do these chocolate cupcakes, people will be like, you are a baking god, uh, and I'm not. Part of the reason why I chose to do this video is that I have a very special birthday coming up in my family. Uh, my little baby is gonna be 21 and she wanted chocolate cupcakes with vanilla frosting. So, not only does she get her cupcakes, you get a video. Isn't it awesome? I wanna hear about your chocolate cupcakes, your frostings, tell me all about it in the comments down below. I know everyone has their own birthday traditions, but in our house, the Proto House, we have a couple of traditions. First of all, cake in the morning. I used to work nights and I was home in the morning, so we would have cake in the mornings. Breakfast in bed, you always got breakfast in bed. I even get breakfast in bed, usually with a cake. By the way, there's a lot of cake in my birthday traditions. And uh, you get the dinner of your choice, usually going out or me cooking. Uh, so I wanna hear about your birthday traditions as well. My daughter wanted these cupcakes for her birthday. Uh, it tells you how good they are because she's super picky about my cooking. Not anyone else's, just mine. For my chocolate cupcakes, this is what you're gonna need. Cocoa powder, brown sugar, eggs, baking soda, baking powder, salt, flour, yogurt, vegetable oil, sugar, vanilla, and for the frosting, we're gonna need that same vanilla, powdered sugar, and butter. Before we start baking, let's talk about some of the ingredients. I am using oil in this, not butter. You can use butter, butter has better flavor, but I find that when you use oil, the baked goods stay moister longer, so they stay a little more like, you know, they don't dry out. Another ingredient I use is yogurt. You can use buttermilk. You can use regular milk, but you want a little acidity in it so you get a little rise. Buttermilk's good for this, yogurt is good for this. If I don't have a lot of yogurt, I'll mix my yogurt and milk together, uh, just as long as you have something with a little acidity in it. The last ingredient I wanna talk about is cocoa powder. I have two separate cocoa powders. I have kind of a lighter cocoa powder and then a black cocoa powder. The black cocoa powder you'll see in like Oreos. You get a really dark, rich kind of bitter flavor. And the lighter cocoa powder gives you a more chocolatey flavor. So I like to use both of these. If you can't find both of these, get a Dutch processed cocoa powder, just better flavor all around, better color all around as well. Another ingredient I wanna talk about is the powdered sugar for the frosting. I use organic, not because I'm trying to be fancy, but here's the thing. Organic powdered sugar has tapioca starch in it, not cornstarch like, like the conventional. Cornstarch, I feel, gives your frosting kind of a grittiness, whereas the tapioca starch doesn't do that. You get a nice, smooth texture. Now, you remember earlier, I said this is a super easy recipe, and that's why I like it, and you're gonna see just how easy it is. Flour in, cocoa in. Make sure you get it everywhere. Baking powder, baking soda, salt. I get a whisk, and I always do my dry ingredients first because I'm gonna use this whisk for my wet ingredients as well. And I just whisk this together really well. But Chef Frank, I thought sugar was dry. It all depends on the recipe. Sometimes the sugar's a dry ingredient, sometimes it's a wet ingredient, and for this recipe, it's a wet ingredient, okay? So we have our dry ingredients whisked together. If you wanna sift them, you can sift them. I am not a sifter, okay? I've aerated it, I've mixed it really well. No need to sift. Next we do the wet ingredients. I'm gonna put all my sugar in, brown and white. My oil goes in. My eggs. If you get a shell in there, which I just did, shell attracts shell. Okay, eggs in, uh, I got my vanilla. I never measure my vanilla. You can tell I'm not a professional baker. And then I have my yogurt. So all this goes in. And then I whisk this together. Make sure that it's combined really well. Get it mixed really well and that's it. So now we have our dry and our wet ingredients ready to go. 
Before I mix my wet and dry ingredients, I wanna get my pans ready. This recipe makes about 24 cupcakes. And uh, if I mix my batter now before this is ready, I lose a lot of the leavening, right? My baking powder and baking soda will start to react and then I'll lose my bubbles. So I wanna get my pans ready and then mix. I know I'm gonna get a ton of comments on my pans. I've had these for over 20 years. I've been baking cupcakes and muffins with them over 20 years, so don't give me a hard time. They are clean. They just have a lot of stains on them and uh, cooked on oil. So if your pans don't look like this, you're not baking as much as me. They're clean. So I put a muffin paper in each one. I do not grease these. There's no need to grease them if you have the muffin papers. If I was using the pans without the paper, then you'd have to spray them, but I very rarely use these pans without paper in them. Make sure it's just one paper per, and usually one stack is about 24. Everything's ready to go. I have my wet and dry ingredients. My tins have paper in them. My oven is preheated, ready to go, okay? Then we mix. We wanna be ready, and then we mix. So, wet into dry. Get it out, right? This will take a minute to get together, right? Sometimes the, the cocoa powder just doesn't absorb the liquid as quickly as the flour. So I'm just gonna mix, and I like to just turn my bowl. I feel like it gives me a little mechanical advantage over the batter. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's just, I guess it's a quirk of mine. Again, make sure you get it everywhere because basically that's what happens when, it, when you're dealing with cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is one of those things that you get it on you, it goes everywhere, it makes a mess. That's just how it is. Make sure you get the sides, get down to the bottom, and give it a really good mix. This is not like a pancake batter, uh, where you don't wanna mix it that much. You wanna make sure that you mix it really well, get as many lumps out as you can. And look at how dark and beautiful this batter is. All right, batter is mixed, now we can put them in the tins and throw them in the oven. Before we bake, I wanna talk about my scoop. I've talked about this many times in videos. People think of this as an ice cream scoop. This is an ice cream scoop, but it's also called a dish or it's a portion scoop. It's about one ounce, I think. And it makes things so much easier and cleaner when you're scooping into pans like this. I pick my pan up. I get a scoop, plop it in. I don't want it to drip all around. So I'm gonna go one scoop around everywhere. Everything gets one scoop for now. And I see how I turn my pan. I bring my pan to the batter so I'm not dripping everywhere. I think that's super important. So I'm gonna do all 24 like this, and then I'll come back and top it off and try and get it as even as possible with the rest. Like I know that one was small. So I'm not worried about getting it perfect right now. I'm gonna get it as close as possible. Like these drips drive me nuts. All right, now we can go back and assess which ones are lighter. So just fill them up a little more, go back and say, oh, that one doesn't have a lot. So just go around, see which ones you think needs topping off and top them off. Look at that, no need to tap. I see people tapping and stuff like that. Don't do that, just scoop them out. I like to take a moment and clean up any batter on the outside. It's harder to clean up once it's baked on, so kind of wipe it off. All right, it's time to bake. I'm gonna go throw this in the oven. I have two shelves in my oven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one on top, one on bottom put them in about halfway through, I'm gonna turn them and switch shelves. Even though it's a convection oven, I feel like you get a much more even and consistent bake this way. While the cupcakes are baking in the oven, I'm gonna make the frosting or the buttercream. I have some unsalted butter in my bowl. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. Salt's a flavor enhancer. I use unsalted butter because I can control the salt. I put a pinch in there, I know how much is in there, okay? Um, I'm gonna put this on the machine. I'm gonna use a paddle, I prefer a paddle. I don't mind if my buttercream or my frosting is a little more on the dense side. If you wanna use a whip, use a whip. If your butter is not room temperature, this is not going to work all that well. Put it in the microwave, get it to room temp. I'm gonna scrape my sides down. Butter likes to stick to the side and you want this frosting to be nice and combined and mixed well. So scrape your sides down occasionally. I'm gonna add uh, some of my powdered sugar. I'm just gonna add them all a bunch at once. Now, big thing here is don't turn the machine on high right now. Start really low. You're still gonna get a little bit of a plume of sugar, but just start low. It's gonna go everywhere. Once I put my sugar in, I'm gonna add a nice amount of vanilla. Uh, one ingredient I didn't talk about earlier was milk. Milk is just gonna help the sugar melt into the butter a little bit better. 
and I'm just gonna let this go. So I'm gonna let it whip, scrape my sides down because there's sugar and butter on the sides. Add another kind of batch of sugar. I'm probably gonna add two full bags for the most part. I want it to be sweet, but my biggest complaint is that when frosting has too much sugar in it, it hurts your teeth and it's no fun. So let's let this whip. When it comes to baking, I do follow a recipe, but a lot of times I'm also going on looks. I see how things look, and if they look good, I will, uh, you know, kind of override what the recipe says. So again, scraping down. I'm gonna scrape down at least three or four times. All right, let's give it a taste. Let's see where we're at. Get your Star Wars tasting spoon. I think it's good. I'm gonna put a little more vanilla in. I'm gonna let it whip now. I'm gonna let it go until it gets lighter and fluffier. I'm just gonna leave it alone for about three to five minutes and just let it get a little airy. All right, this has been beating for a few minutes. Let's take it off of the machine. Get your paddle off. Let's move that mixer out of the way. And I'm just gonna make sure that I got everything off of the paddle. This looks great. I'm just gonna scrape the sides down once more. Make sure that there's no dry pockets. Make sure everything's mixed in really well. And that's it. Let's wait for our cupcakes to come out and we can frost them. All right, cupcakes are done. I had a little sinking over here. I think I poked the air out of it when I tested it, but I put my toothpick or my bamboo skewer in and it comes out clean. That's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna let these cool in the pan for a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna take them out and put them on a cooling rack. The cupcakes have cooled for a few minutes. I'm just gonna get in there with a butter knife and just take them out. Put them on my cooling rack. These need to cool completely all the way. They can't be a little warm. They can't be uh, slightly warm. They have to be cooled completely before you frost them. If they don't cool completely, your frosting just melts right off. All right, let's let these cool completely and then we can frost. Cupcakes are cool, let's uh, frost them up. I'm just using a regular butter knife. If you have a fancy spatula, you can. What I like to do is put a lump in the middle. Just get a nice pile in the middle. And then I just kind of spin it and turn it. I'm not a pastry chef, so it's not perfect, but I'm okay. Just enough frosting, don't pile up too much. Right, and you can always put more on if you want. If that's your thing, tons of frosting, go ahead, do it. But I just like kind of a, uh, just enough to balance the sweetness of the chocolate or the bitterness of the chocolate that is. All right, let me put the rest of these away and we can give it a taste. All right, it's my favorite time, time to taste. I'm taking this baby, peeling the paper off. Don't eat the paper, okay? I don't care how good you think it is. Now, I feel like the proper way to eat a cupcake is this. Take off the top, put the bottom on the top, and eat it like a sandwich. Let's give it a try. Mm. Excuse me. It's deeply chocolatey. It's got a little bitterness from the chocolate. The frosting is sweet and delicious. And it's super easy. It's got everything you want in a chocolate cupcake. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Uh, we have merch in the description down below. We have a PO box down there as well. Uh, I wanna thank our Patreon patrons for supporting us. Thank you so much. And that is my chocolate cupcakes with vanilla frosting. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. Have a sweet day. Check out my Instagram channel, at Proto Cooks, and see if my daughter actually liked them.